No one ever thought the day would come when Boeing and Airbus could be challenged. For decades, they have dominated the skies, turning the narrow-body aircraft market into their own playground. But there is a more interesting competition in the East. With the C-919 and MC-21, China and Russia aim not just to produce domestic aircraft, but to reshape the global aviation landscape. But who will rise first, and do they truly have what it takes to compete with the Western giants? Let's dive in. When looking at the origins of the C-919 and MC-21, one fascinating commonality emerges. Both were born out of Western export restrictions and sanctions. Instead of relying on foreign technology, China and Russia were forced to develop their own commercial aircraft, inadvertently sparking a race between two rising powers in the skies. First, both the C-919 and MC-21 are designed to compete in the narrow-body aircraft segment, a market known for high profitability and strong demand in their respective countries. But which aircraft is better, and who will be able to challenge Boeing and Airbus? The C-919 COMAX ambitious project is rapidly gaining momentum. The recent opening of offices in Singapore and Hong Kong is a clear indication that Shanghai is steadily expanding its influence in the international market. While this Chinese aircraft currently operates only on domestic routes, recent strategic moves suggest this may only be a temporary limitation. Meanwhile, Russia's MC-21, developed by Irkut to compete directly with the Boeing 737 MAX and Airbus A320neo, has faced a rockier path. Initially reliant on Western components, the aircraft was forced to accelerate its localization efforts due to sanctions. While this has delayed its entry into service, it has also provided Russia with an opportunity to build a stronger technological foundation. However, lessons from the Sukhoi Superjet 100, Russia's previous commercial aircraft, highlight the significant challenges the country's aviation industry must overcome. Will the C-919 surge ahead with its aggressive expansion strategy, or will the MC-21 prove its advantage through domestic technological innovation? Let's take a closer look. But hold on! You're still here? That's epic! We're on a mission to hit 50,000 subscribers, and guess what? You can be a part of it! If you haven't already, go ahead and smash that subscribe button. Let's make this milestone happen together. Huge thanks! Although competition with the same segment, these two models differ significantly in range, passenger capacity, and market positioning. The Chinese aircraft has a maximum range of 4,075 kilometers, making it ideal for domestic and regional routes. In contrast, the Russian aircraft boasts a range of up to 6,400 kilometers, bringing it closer to the Airbus A321, one of the most popular choices for longer routes. This gives the MC-21 an advantage in serving medium-haul flights while maintaining high operational efficiency. In terms of capacity, the C-919 can accommodate up to 168 passengers, depending on cabin configuration. The MC-21 comes in two variants, the MC-21-200, which seats 163 passengers, and the 300 variant, which can carry up to 211 passengers. With the 300 variant, the MC-21, not only surpasses the C-919 in range, but also in seating capacity, making it a more attractive option for airlines looking to maximize revenue on medium-haul routes. Additionally, the Russian aircraft features several advanced design elements, including a wider cabin than its competitors in the same segment, providing passengers with a more comfortable travel experience. Meanwhile, the Chinese aircraft prioritizes meeting China's domestic demand before expanding into international markets. This key difference in development strategy sets the two aircraft apart, even as they both aim to challenge Western aviation giants. To attract airlines, performance and cutting-edge technology alone are not enough. Pricing also plays a crucial role. Estimates suggest that the C919 is priced between 90 to 100 million dollars, making it more affordable than the Airbus A320 Neo, 111 million dollars, and Boeing 737 Max, 121 million dollars. However, the MC21 appears even more cost competitive. The Variant 200 is priced at approximately 72 million, while the 300 variant costs around 91 million dollars, making it a more economical choice for airlines. With its more competitive pricing, the Russian aircraft has the potential to attract significant interest from airlines seeking a cost-effective solution without compromising on modern technology. 
On the other hand, while the C919 holds a price advantage over its Western rivals, it still needs to prove its long-term reliability and operational efficiency to establish itself as a formidable contender in the global market. The competition between these two aircraft is not just a battle of technology, but also a clash of pricing strategies, production scalability, and market penetration speed. Manufacturing any product, especially an aircraft, inevitably comes with countless challenges. China's C919 carries great ambitions but has yet to break free from Western technology. Lacking full control over engine development, this aircraft is forced to rely on the Leap 1C engine from CFM International, while its avionic systems depend on Honeywell. This dependence is a critical vulnerability. By relying heavily on foreign components, it becomes an easy target for sanctions. Any disruption in the supply chain or export restrictions on key parts could put the entire project at serious risk. Aware of this, Shanghai has been pushing to develop domestic components and accelerate its indigenous engine program. However, aircraft engine manufacturing is the most challenging task in aviation, arguably even more complex than building an entire aircraft. As a result, to be more independent in this industry, China needs more time to research and develop. In contrast to the C919, the MC21 was initially designed as an international project incorporating many Western components in its early prototypes. However, when faced with sanctions, Moscow was forced to pivot toward full domestic production. By developing its own avionic systems and, most notably, the PD-14 engine, this country ensured that the MC-21 would no longer be dependent on Western suppliers. That said, this transition was far from easy. Replacing all imported components significantly delayed development, slowing the aircraft's path to commercialization. In the long run, this strategy could grant Russia technological independence, an advantage that the Chinese aircraft is still struggling to achieve. This also leads to an intriguing rumor regarding the once promising joint project between Russia and China, the CR-929, later renamed the C-929. The project's breakdown was not merely a consequence of sanctions or difficulties in accessing technology. Beneath the surface, it was a clash between two emerging aviation powers, where national interests and control over technology played a decisive role. On the surface, the official reason given revolved around geopolitical instability and the sanctions imposed on Moscow, which hindered the country's access to essential technology and components. This directly impacted the project's progress and its ability to move forward. Furthermore, the growing divergence in strategic vision between Russia's United Aircraft Corporation and China's Commercial Aircraft Corporation of China became increasingly evident, particularly regarding market control and division. However, the story behind the scenes is even more intriguing. Reports suggest that Shanghai was not only interested in cooperation, but also had ambitions to own full access to engine technology, one of the most crucial components of any commercial aircraft. Aware of the value of this technology, Moscow outright refused to transfer it. This created an irreparable rift, causing the project to stall and eventually be completely taken over by China. What once symbolized aviation cooperation between the two powers has now become an independent Chinese project, reflecting this country's ambitions for technological self-sufficiency, while also highlighting Russia's caution in protecting its strategic advantage in the aviation industry. Additionally, mentioned to Russian Aviation Challenge, the Sukhoi Superjet 100 underwent a similar journey. Initially reliant on imported components, but later forced to shift to domestic production due to sanctions. This transition increased costs and complicated the manufacturing process, yet it also drove technological development and industrial infrastructure growth, laying a crucial foundation for the MC-21. Launched in 2008 with high expectations, the Superjet 100 quickly encountered major challenges, from high operating costs and frequent technical issues to difficulties in maintenance. These problems limited the aircraft's success primarily to the domestic market, while its ambitions for international expansion failed, this highlights the risks of relying on foreign components in a globally competitive industry. The MC-21, initiated in 2007, has not been immune to similar obstacles. Sanctions and the process of localizing components have caused continuous delays in the project. 
However, unlike the Superjet 100, the Russian aircraft has maintained its development momentum and is moving closer to mass production, demonstrating Russia's resilience in building an independent aviation industry. Back to the initial question, who wins? Born in 2008, the C919 is a newcomer to the aviation market, but its development speed has far outpaced many competitors, particularly the MC21. With strong backing from the Chinese government, the project has not only received massive financial investment, but also leveraged a modern supply chain to accelerate commercialization. As mentioned before, currently the C919 primarily operates on domestic routes, but China has already begun preparations for international expansion. Infrastructure at key aviation hubs such as Singapore and Hong Kong is gradually being developed, signaling an ambitious strategy to enter foreign markets. Not only longer for the domestic demand, this country is advancing faster in this race. With unlimited government support and a well-planned expansion strategy, this Chinese aircraft has significant advantages in making an early impact on the global market, bringing China's ambition of becoming an aviation powerhouse closer to reality. Currently, the C919 is ahead of the MC21, having already entered commercial operation, while the MC21 has yet to be officially introduced to the market. However, in terms of aircraft manufacturing experience, Russia holds a significant advantage, having exported multiple models, such as the Antonov 148-158 to North Korea and Cuba, the Tupolev 204 and Ilyushin Il-96 to Cuba, and the SSJ-100, which is used domestically and in countries like Belgium and Armenia. Despite facing numerous sanctions and technological restrictions, Moscow has maintained its capability to produce commercial aircraft, and the development of the MC-21 is proof of that. This aircraft benefits from lessons learned from the Superjet, and is built on a solid foundation of domestic technology. The progress has been delayed, but if this Russian aircraft meets international standards for service and reliability, it could still become a formidable competitor in the market. As of now, Russia plans to mass-produce six MC-21 aircraft for delivery to Aeroflot in 2024. Meanwhile, COMAC is ramping up C919 production, with plans to deliver 30 aircraft this year and an additional 50 currently in the final assembly stage by September 20th, 24. The C919 and MC21 are emerging as the most formidable contenders from the East, challenging the dominance of Boeing and Airbus. Russia has demonstrated its ability to develop aviation technology independently despite being cut off from Western supply chains, while China is leveraging its vast resources to accelerate the commercialization of the C919. The MC21 boasts a solid foundation of domestic technology and high adaptability, whereas the C919 benefits from strong investment and an impressive rollout speed. So, which project do you think has the upper hand in this race? Share your thoughts. Thank you for watching. As always, wishing you safe and enjoyable flights.